Hi, my name's Jay, I'm from Merck Servicing in Nuneaton and today I want to tell you a little bit about the um, advantages and mostly the disadvantages of having your AdBlue system mapped out, which is something that comes up on my feed every day and um, I feel like I'm banging my head against a bit of a brick wall sometimes um, and uh, rather than write out paragraphs uh, on every single post that I come across I thought it'd be a lot easier if I just made a video. So here I am, I'm uh, currently cruising in my uh, E500, the, uh, something that is definitely not a Euro 6 vehicle but um, first of all I'll explain a little bit about how the AdBlue and NOx system works and I I've been working with these for um, 20 years now with Mercedes, well professionally for 20 plus years I've been around Mercedes all of my life and um, uh, let me tell you if there's anyone that hates knock sensors uh, on this planet more than me I'd like to meet them because I have spent millions of pounds on knock sensors um, in my previous company we used to um, buy and sell Mercedes and um, knock sensors were pretty much an every vehicle thing we needed to replace um, people sold their vehicles because they didn't want to spend the money replacing knock sensors so you know there's no one out there that hates knock sensors more than me but I also hold the view that you really shouldn't be um, deleting them um, no matter how, you know how much they cost um, so so I'll explain a little bit about the knock sensor system and um, why maybe you sh should reconsider before taking the advice of just delete and map it out, which everyone seems to do. As I pull up to our unit and I look up in the sky, this is what we're trying to protect, our planet, right? So although I may not be an eco warrior, I drive my E500 everywhere. We have to appreciate that the environmental concerns are real. There is a reason why we have AdBlue and knock sensors. So let me tell you a little bit about that. So I've just come to our unit where I have a lot of parts and bits and pieces so I can explain to you a little bit better how the AdBlue system works. Okay, so what is AdBlue? AdBlue is a urea-based additive that is injected into Euro 6 vehicles exhaust systems to bring the emissions down. So the AdBlue helps to get the emissions uh, right down on a, on a, on a vehicle. And uh, it's, um, it's injected via these injectors into what's called the SCR, the Selective Catalyst Reduction System. And how much AdBlue do you inject into here is controlled by NOx sensors, our favourite things. Like I say, we've replaced thousands and thousands over the years. I've spent millions, I mean, I probably could have bought a uh, lovely big mansion in the Florida Keys. Um, should, I, should it have not been for NOx sensors? So, yeah, I hate these things, but here we go. So the knock sensors control how much AdBlue is sent into the exhaust system here. Um, and um, it's important uh, because uh, Euro 6 vehicles need these, uh, need these to work in order to keep the emissions right down. You'll notice on a Euro 6 vehicle, which is most Mercedes after about 2013, 2014, um, they brought it out earlier on MLs and uh, S-classes um, uh, around 2010, 2011. Um, they were known as Blue Tech. So anything that's Blue Tech is Euro 6. Anything that's Blue Efficiency is before. Oh, and that brings me on to, by the way, you know, we used to be scared of the DPF system when Blue Efficiency first came out. We thought DPFs were the devil's work. Um, EGRs before that, and everyone's answer was just to remap everything out. And as we move on, we understand how these systems work. We realize that actually, we don't need to just remap and blank these things out. That's a fool's game. We just need to learn how these things work, and then um, we, can, uh, we can adapt to it. So here is a knock sensor of a Mercedes E-Class, as you can see. There is one pre the um, SCR and one post the SCR. You can't see the post one on this because it's on a different part of the exhaust system. But um, basically the idea is that the NOx sensors measure the exhaust gases before and after the catalyst where the AdBlue is injected into. So it knows how much AdBlue to inject. Okay, so that's your basic system on the exhaust and then you'll have an AdBlue tank, an AdBlue pump and an AdBlue pipe which runs the AdBlue over to the injector over here. This system, if it's not used or if the cars are doing short mileage, it's just like a DPF or anything else, will become clogged, you'll have issues. But despite, apart from any of those issues, we do see a lot of just sensors failing. And unfortunately, it's very, very common. Yes, I do believe that Mercedes and other manufacturers should be covering these for life because they, they invented these things and they invented them in a bit of a rush, I think, to meet the Euro 6 standards so that they could sell more cars uh, meet the emission standards and uh, uh, satisfy governments. 
They, we've read about all the scandals that have happened um, over the last 10, 12 years with these systems. Um, Volkswagen took the brunt of the, the bad publicity, but actually all of these systems are very, very similar. VW Audi seem to suffer with water ingress. Uh, Mercedes E-Class seem to suffer with water ingress into these systems. Um, that's a slightly different subject, but more often than not, it's just the sensors, they just fail. They're just a bad design and the software to go with it was a bad design. Um, so Mercedes at some point did take a little bit of responsibility. They were replacing knock sensors free of charge. Um, they were only doing one out of the two. And then at some point they changed their minds again and um, they decided that they weren't going to do that anymore. So um, now it's not uh, covered by Mercedes. As far as I know, as far as I'm aware, uh, knock sensors are not covered anymore by Mercedes and uh, they will charge you for um, the privilege of replacing them. And these aren't cheap. I mean, these, these 15, 905, 1512 uh, are a little bit of the che uh, cheaper than some of them. These are, I think, around a 300 to 400 pound mark for the, for the part. Um, some of them can range up to seven or 800. And so by the time you add labor and coding, you can be spending a thousand pounds for one knock sensor, maybe 16 or 1700 for two knock sensors. Um, and uh, it becomes an expensive game. So you can see why people want to take shortcuts and just remap them out. Okay, so why not just remap and delete the system? It's the solution for everyone apparently at the moment. When you go onto uh, Facebook or internet forums or wherever it may be, um, everyone's solution is just, just remap it out. Why do you want this system? Well, it's quite simple. Number one, as I alluded to earlier, we, the, these, are, these systems are created to take care of our planet, um, to keep the emissions down, um, and to pass the standards that the government has set for the manufacturers. They're important, uh, I think, in order to keep our city safe, um, the air pollution down and uh, protecting the future generations. But it's illegal. Number one, it's illegal. It's, um, it's, it's, it's completely illegal. There is no grey area on that. If you uh, want to search the internet, you'll find out. If you alter with the emission system of a vehicle uh, from the specified uh, setup from the factory, it's illegal. So you're committing a crime by actually remapping these systems out so that's the number one reason um, and number two reason that we find is there's a lot more bad remaps out there than good we are here every day we are diagnosing cars for all sorts of issues and we find that a lot of the time the issues are down to a poor remap um, we cannot diagnose cars correctly when someone has been into the ECU and tampered with it so that when we read actual values or live data it sends us off on different directions because why because to remap a car that means they've actually disabled some of the sensors on the vehicle and so anything that we try and diagnose is probably incorrect so we end up having to put the software back correct whatever the knock sensor or add blue issue was initially and then we can diagnose whatever the fault was with the car now and the same thing goes when a car goes into mercedes for a recall so if your car goes into mercedes for a recall um, and they update the software what will happen is, if you have a, if you re remapped it out, likeliness is that the car won't start afterwards because it's got some kind of knocks or add blue issue, and the dealer will say, right, we've um, done the recall, but unfortunately your car is now um, sat, sat here. It's as, basically as good as a brick. Um, nothing we can do because you had your car remapped, um, and they're perfectly within their right to say that. There's nothing uh, you can do about it apart from uh, pay them to reinstall everything and and correct the ad blue system in, in, uh, in, in the correct manner. And it will be expensive at a main dealer. So, you know, when your knock sensors go, think about ringing around um, local independents because people like us, we can do it a little bit cheaper than your main dealer for you. Um, because obviously we don't have the same sort of cost as a main dealer. Another reason why you shouldn't remap these systems out. When a car is designed, everything is designed to work in tandem with another part of the vehicle, okay? You can't just remap things out and expect the rest of the vehicle to carry on. Good remappers will argue this point, but in my experience, you will find that once you start remapping something, you'll be, always be chasing some kind of other issue um, or you'll, there'll be some other kind of compromise. A vehicle is designed for every single system in the vehicle to work with one another. Every system communicates with one another through something called CAN networks. And it has to be a really good remap, which is usually quite expensive and defeats the object of doing this in the first place for it to work properly without these systems. So what we find is that people who remap things 
it never stops. You, you'll end up remapping your, your AdBlue system out, and then you'll end up remapping your EGR system out, and then you'll end up remapping something else out until you've remapped your engine out, and then that's it. What, what is there left? So, you know, you're going to start remapping something, you're going down a dangerous slope, um, and the car will never run as intended from factory with, uh, with a remap. I'm sorry, it just won't. Um, these systems are designed to reduce the emissions. Um, there are sensors then further upstream towards the engine that will have false readings. Um, and yep, the remappers will obviously take this into account and adjust uh, or block these sensors. But those sensors then rely, uh, sorry, uh, drive other information to the engine and your engine um, you know, won't be running as effectively as it should be, um, even if it's a minute amount. Um, but over the miles, you'll find that there'll be other issues when you start remapping things. Um, as I said earlier, people started remapping EGRs and DPFs. It was, it was ridiculous, it just wasn't necessary. It's because people didn't understand how the systems worked, um, how the cars needed a drive uh, to keep the systems clean and clear, and uh, the solution was always just remap it out. Well, you know, any mechanic worth their salt should not be recommending anything being remapped out. Um, it should be co fixed correctly, um, and uh, Trust me, it becomes more expensive in the long run to remap things rather than just to uh, fix it properly in the first place. So these sensors here, this is a, uh, I like to call it a 3503 because that's the last four digits. So 3503 is, is one of the mid-range sensors. I think it's around about 500 pounds for the part from Mercedes. And yeah, necessarily, um, oh, sorry, you should really change both um, in one go, but uh, you know, you can just change the one and see how you get on. And then if, if the second one goes, um, you can replace it later. Uh, so, um, you know, five or six hundred pounds is the cost of the part normally, uh, and then a couple of hundred pounds in labor and coding and, and for putting the latest software on the vehicle. Um, you know, there's a lot of bad diagnosis that goes on out there. Um, people end up replacing these SCR converters, and this is really why we've got a pile of them. Uh, we use them for testing purposes, but, you know, these aren't usually faulty. It's, um, it's NOx sensors or it's AdBlue injectors that sometimes get blocked up. Um, and the, these sensors really should just be um, changed, um, and, and your car will perform as it should. You'll be legal. You'll sell it to the next owner with a clear conscience, knowing that the car is how it should be. Um, and you won't be always thinking about the other things that could go wrong from a poor remap. You know, um, we hear about people remapping these out for 80 pounds. I'm, I'm sorry, but for 80 pounds, you're asking for trouble. Um, so yeah, think, think twice before you do that. And one other thing while I'm here, I'd like to make you aware of is these sensors are sold only by Mercedes dealers or people like us independents who buy from Mercedes dealers. Uh, you may want to buy it from us because we get a little bit of a discount from our dealers and we can then um, obviously pass that saving on. Um, and, um, you know, so it might be a little bit cheaper from us than what you pay at a dealer. If you go on eBay and there are people selling Mercedes sensors for what the half the price they should be, okay, there's something wrong. Because these sensors have precious metals inside them. They're expensive to make. If you're buying a sensor for less than, say, three or four hundred pounds, it's not going to be a genuine sensor. These are expensive to produce and no one out there that I have experienced up to this date in June 2025 is repairing these reliably. So there are people out there that are selling refurbished units and we have tried all of them. Trust me, because remember, I used to spend millions of pounds on these things and there is no one out there that makes them, um, uh, makes them reliably work. They just don't do it. They just, they just cannot do it because the parts needed are not available on the market to anyone um, and apart from Mercedes who, who make them obviously brand new. Um, you can buy refurbished items from Mercedes and those work. So anything that's got a part number ending in um, 80 or 87 is a refurbished part. A 64 is a new part or if it's not got the 64, it's a new part. 80 or 87 is a refurbished part and Mercedes re manufactured parts do seem to work very well. There's no issues there. But if you've gone on the internet and start buying fake parts, oh, that's the other thing. There are a lot of fake sensors on eBay. People are advertising brand new Mercedes sensors. Um, they're not brand new. If you're paying anything under, like I said, 350, 400 pounds for a sensor, it is not a brand new Mercedes sensor. You are being scammed. Do not buy it. Okay, the Mercedes logo looks like this. Okay, and it is just a piece of paper, so it's easily copied. Um, you know, there are no holograms or anything. Um, so, you know, anyone can copy this and that is what is happening. People, because they're so expensive, people are just putting cheap sensors inside a box, printing these labels and then calling them genuine. This is what a real one looks like, okay? Compare it carefully. You'll see that there are slight differences in the text and the font of those ones on, on the internet being sold at uh, a fraction of the of price of a, a real one. 
Uh, we get customers all the time, oh, we fitted a knock sensor, um, we just need you to code it. Okay, we'll code it. And then a week later, they've got faults again. And then when we asked them where they got the sensor, well, it was that online marketplace and uh, they paid, you know, 180, 200 pounds for a sensor. I'm sorry, you bought a fake one. That's what you did. So in my opinion, please do not skimp. Replace the knock sensors. Until such a point that Mercedes take ownership and responsibility, just like with all the other manufacturers, that this was a rushed system in order to meet Euro 6 standards, uh, a rushed design and um, not enough testing, and their sensors are failing. Uh, until they take that ownership, unfortunately, we need to ensure that uh, these, the, these systems keep running effectively. Um, and you know you don't want to end up with major issues with your car just because you skimped out on a couple of sensors. And by the way, once these are done, once both of these knock sensors are done, we don't tend to see them failing again. With the latest software and with the newest um, sensors, we don't seem, tend to see them failing again. And it's not just a diesel thing. Um, knock sensors are fitted to petrol cars. Why don't we see as many uh, petrol cars being complained about? Just because there's not many out there. Um, in the 2010, 2020 age range, uh, most cars sold with diesel and there's just not many petrols. Uh, we were just five minutes ago uh, diagnosed a, a GLE um, that came in, it was a petrol GLE and that one needs uh, knock sensors replacing. Um, luckily um, some of the sensors are cheaper than others um, but like I say um, invest the money and this system will run properly uh, for, for a long period of time without any issues. Um, the only other issue sometimes that we see is block systems from the AdBlue. So you might find, especially MLs, their pumps fail, level sensors fail on the MLs. Um, again, you know, those, those you can get decent aftermarket parts, uh, a decent price. Um, Bosch make good aftermarket uh, level sensors and pumps for the MLs. Um, on other models, we just see these um, injectors get blocked up inside. And normally they can be cleaned out. We just uh, remove them and clean off the uh, crystallized AdBlue, um, uh, clean them through, and then, um, and then they should uh, start spraying AdBlue again, effectively. So like any system on a car, these, these systems do require maintenance. Any, any sensors on a, any, any, any parts of the car, they do require maintenance from time to time. But with the knock sensors, which is a contentious thing that we, everyone talks about, uh, yeah, they're expensive, but you'll spend it once and you can forget about it after that. Um, you know, it, it, is, it is a good system when it works. Unfortunately, I agree that, um, uh, you know, Mercedes should be taking responsibility for these items, but they don't. Uh, and that's where we are at this moment in time. So uh, that's uh, my video. I hope I can change some minds out there because, you know, there just seems to be a lot of people out there just remapping their cars, um, probably doing damage that they don't even know about until further down the line or for the next owner to deal with. Um, you know, it's, it's not a good idea just to remap them out and, um, and you know, it's, it's remappers and other people who have had it done will shout loudly that no, it's the way to go. It really isn't, you know, it's, it's number one, it's illegal. You shouldn't be doing it. You know, it's, 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 it's just not a good idea. And I'm pretty sure it will be part of the MOT test very soon. I'm an MOT tester. Uh, it took a few years for the, the, uh, the DPFs to be part of the MOT system. Uh, and now um, uh, DPFs are any evidence of a tampering. It should, uh, it should, uh, it will fail the MOT, and it should be the same for the knock sensors. That's what's going to happen in the future, I'm sure. Any tampering to the emission system is a failure of the MOT. Anyway, thank you for watching my video. It's gone a little bit longer than I wanted to. I wanted to make it brief and succinct, but it's quite a, it's quite a, a deep subject, and um, there's quite a lot to explain. I could have gone into a lot more detail, but I think uh, I'll leave it there. Thank you for watching, and uh, hopefully. Uh, it's helped some people make their minds up on the system. Thank you.